How do you stay motivated on YouTube when growth is slow? Don't compare your growth to others. Are you actually doing better on YouTube than you realize? You gotta stop overthinking and start working. Sitting idle makes you prone to negative thoughts. What is your motive for starting YouTube in the first place? Maybe you're feeling discouraged, frustrated, and even tired from just not breaking through yet. In this episode of the Think Media Podcast, I wanna share five tips for staying motivated and recapturing your inspiration. But the first thing I wanna encourage you with is you're not alone. Anybody who's taken the leap of faith to start posting content on YouTube, to doing the hard work of sacrificing your time and putting in energy and learning new skills and getting uncomfortable, has experienced emotions of discouragement, overwhelm, negative thinking patterns. It's a whole thing when you start creating YouTube content. So I want you to remember that although this can feel lonely and can feel isolating, that you're in good company with other creators who are fighting the fight of getting views just like you are. But you haven't broken through yet, or you just feel like maybe you've plateaued or that growth has been slow and maybe even you've been doing this a couple years. Well, I do believe that these five things will really help you when it comes to staying motivated and even breaking through into the growth you are looking for. And number one is don't compare your growth to others. Man, comparison is the thief of joy and the killer of creativity and absolutely the destroyer of motivation. You know, comparison is the fastest way to stirring up the pot of anxiety, failure, feelings of inadequacy. And so I wanna encourage you, number one, it's your race, your pace. I think that one of the reasons why it can be demotivating is yes, you maybe want to give your boss notice that you're going to part-time or completely be able to quit your job to do that. And that's a lot of the YouTube creator's aspirations. And if you're a business owner, you may be feeling like, man, I'm having a little bit of growth on YouTube and some leads are coming in, like some growth is happening, but it's just like really not enough. And maybe your P&L is looking a little tight right now. It's a little tough. And you look over to somebody else who started after you did and they blew up. You get on Instagram, you look at somebody else, they just posted their silver play button. You you know look at other channels in your same niche that you even try to really objectively study their content. And you're like, I feel like my content's better. My production's better. And, and comparison just leads you down a path that is ultimately not helpful. Don't compare your growth to others. That's not going to help you stay motivated. It's going to suck away your motivation. And I also want you to remember that there's difference in niches and topics, you know, that sometimes it's absolutely the wrong thing to compare a niche business channel to a entertainment YouTube channel. And I want you to remember that different niches and different topics experience different levels of growth. A niche business channel may never experience massive growth, but it may be more than sufficient to actually reach the target audience that they wanna reach, to reach the revenue goals that they wanna reach compared to kind of traditional YouTube success metrics, which is, oh, a million subscribers and millions of views and viral videos. There's just differences. So be aware of not comparing your topic to some other industry, even the size of your niche. There's a lot of reasons why even Think Media is the size it is, but might not be as large as other things because we specifically talk about tools for creators, cameras and audio tools for making videos and video podcasts versus consumer electronics at large. Now, it's not to say our channel would be bigger or smaller, but just, when, you know, for example, CES, the Consumer Electronics Show here in Vegas, a lot more people are buying TVs for their home and sound systems and cell phones than are buying cameras. It is a small demographic that wants to buy a camera to create YouTube content. So it would be foolish for me to compare my channel to an industry that is a hundred times larger than mine. Bottom line, comparison is not gonna be that helpful, right? And also your starting point could be different. So sometimes you go, oh, somebody else started after me, but they're further than me, but you're like, yeah, but they also did an internship for 10 years at a media department of a church, or they have some experience. 
It doesn't even really matter, but these are just factors of why you're, it's not all the same. It's your race. It's your situation. It's your circumstances. And ultimately, you got to do the best with what you have and not worry about comparing yourself and especially your growth to other people. Number two, though, I think the opportunity to get motivated again, especially if you've been grinding for the long haul for that YouTube breakthrough, is I want to encourage you to reframe your perspective. Number two, reframe your perspective. I'm reading a book called Decisive about how to make better decisions. And one of the key tactics they recommend for making better decisions is attain distance before deciding. It means Oftentimes we're too co close to the problem, we're too close, we're too emotionally tied up with the thing that is discouraging us or frustrating us. And the, the goal is to take a step back and get a wider perspective to get away from a narrow perspective of the situation. So I want to ask you a question. Are you actually doing better on YouTube than you realize? Could it be that actually the growth is not as slow as you imagine? And here's what I mean. I've actually learned from now coaching people through channel reviews in particular, through our Video Ranking Academy program, through our monthly Q&As inside of our private Facebook group. And people will ask me questions a lot. And I hear this a lot, a lot of discouragement or a lot of I wish I was growing faster or I'm not growing. This is my favorite one. People say, Sean, I'm not growing. Sean, my channel is plateaued. Sean, I'm completely stuck. Sean, what's wrong with my channel? It appears to be broken. So I go to their channel. I've got the vidIQ Vision plugin installed. I go to just the stats page that tells me how many views they're getting, how many subscribers they're getting, how many videos they've uploaded. And it's either green because they've experienced growth in the last 28 days or it's red. And in either case, I'll go to the channel of the person who says, Sean, I'm not growing. And I'll see that they got 23,436 4, 23, views in the last 28 days. And their channel's views are up 200%. That they got 87 new subscribers. And that percentage there is 27% positive growth over the month previous. And that they uploaded eight videos, two a week. So I'm like, okay, I know that this isn't viral compared to the most famous YouTubers. But if you actually reframe your perspective. Is your channel actually growing though? Because if you're making forward progress, then it just might not be as fast as you want, but you could be being overly critical on the progress that you're making. If you also could multiply the progress you're making or perhaps figure out, let's say, how to monetize the community that you already have as opposed to reaching anybody new, then it's a matter of reframing your perspective. And if I objectively on the Think Media podcast think back to how often this happens, I would argue that seven out of 10 people have an over, overly negative point of view of the positive things that are happening on their YouTube channel. So I want to encourage you to perhaps just take a step back and look at your channel and actually say, actually, even in this, I feel like, I feel like a failure, but yet if I objectively measured my YouTube channel's growth in the last month, it's all positive. I feel like a failure, but if I thought, okay, I only reached 83,000 views on my YouTube channel in the last month, and I applied that to the fact I grew up in a small town like me. Maybe you grew up small town kid, college dropout. I grew up on six acres on a farm with goats and my horse Little, and ultimately, this was not a big area, Arlington, Washington, especially at the time. And so I start getting 25,000 views on my YouTube channel. It's like twice the size of the town I grew up. And I know that if you're trying to make YouTube ad revenue, you're like, yeah, but Sean, I need millions of views. And subscribe to the podcast. We have content on all of that. But let's just reframe our perspective. Think about the opportunity that you have uploading videos on this platform that is giving you views and that is helping you reach people. And yes, I know you got to invest in gear and you probably also enjoy that like me. So you've got a gear problem and you order gear you don't even necessarily need, but you know, you, you're you building out the battle station, you're buying the cameras and you're thinking about the economics and you're thinking about the, the emotions and the judgment you have from friends and family because you're spending more than you're making on YouTube. However, honor the progress you're making, reframe the results you're getting and then also just take the next step. Because once we reframe our perspective, I found that another wave of motivation comes in. Like, oh shoot, wait, I'm up 200% since last month. And what if I could keep that going? Because then multiply that out. Eventually it becomes incredibly hard. You know, like early on in your business, every time, some, sometimes people like advertise their product or their program, they're like, 
this doubled my revenue. Well, it's one thing to double your revenue when you make $5 a month. Cause you're like, dude, I doubled my revenue. I made $10, you know, but it's a whole nother thing. If you make a million dollars a year you're like, I doubled my revenue, like whole nother million dollars. It's a little bit different than an extra five punchline is ultimately if you can just maintain the growth, and one of the things we say in our Video Ranking Academy program is go for green. Now, I use the vidIQ Vision plugin so I can look at your channel, even if without your permission, to just see the external stats of your channel. But all of us have the ability to just go into our YouTube analytics and on that homepage, and you're probably all too familiar with the encouraging or discouraging information, but it either is red, gray, or green. It's either like views were lower than it was last month, views were about the same as it was last month, or views were up 23% over last month. YouTube is really about beating your previous best. So number one, don't compare yourself to others. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday. Compare your channel to who you were yesterday. And please frame some grace around that because talk about the most stressful place on planet Earth is your YouTube analytics. Because there's some things you're like, oh man, everything's down. It's like, dude, it's summer, relax. Like your topic isn't even popular right now. It'll come back when it's back to school. Like there's just different seasons. If we can just compare ourselves, if we can beat our previous best and reframe our perspective. And the final thing on number two is even let's redefine growth because I know you're like, Sean, I want subs, Sean, I want views, but you know, there's a lot of other ways to measure growth. Like let's do a quick assessment of your time on YouTube over the last few weeks, months, or years. Let me ask you a question and just be honest and please be kind to yourself. Have you learned new skills? Are there skills now that you have developed because you started creating YouTube content and building a channel that you did not know before you started? Have you taken the time to honor and celebrate the skills that you've learned? Maybe you haven't fully seen the results of those skills yet, but you're still in a growth, you're in a personal growth season, learning the skill of content creation, communication, video editing, distribution, online marketing. Have you grown in your understanding of the platforms or experienced growth across other platforms? Maybe you're posting vertical content on multiple platforms and so you can celebrate the wins at different places. YouTube pays the best, it's the best home base. You might be like, whoa, I got a viral TikTok. What did that mean financially? Nothing, and it's probably gonna get shut down. But nevertheless, celebrating the wins. Have you gained new knowledge? I would argue if you're listening to the Think Media podcast, you're probably the most educated person at every party you attend when it comes to YouTube marketing, YouTube content creation, online marketing. Now, you might be hanging out with people who don't care, but you know, you're know, you like, I, I wish I could geek out and talk about this with people, but like people with my family and friends, like they don't even want to talk about it. Nevertheless, like think about the knowledge you've been gaining. Like you've been growing, I would guess. And even that growth may feel slow, but I think that one of the mistakes we make is we don't honor the progress we're making. Have you made any new connections or relationships? Have you made one friend? Now, this might not be like the deepest relationship. It's an internet friend. But have you made any internet friends? Have you, have you met somebody? Like, is your life now richer because you know somebody, you've had, you found some new people to follow, and by following those people, inspiration has come your way, education has come your way. Maybe there is somebody that you send reels back and forth to on Instagram and people that maybe, I know people in our VRA community have made friendships and connections inside of our private phrase, Facebook group. These are all things. If those weren't there before, like man, since stepping out on this journey, I've learned new skills. I've gained new knowledge. I've transformed as a person. I've made new connections and relationships. An important term for reframing your perspective is viral versus viral for me. Our friend Brock Johnson, who's been on the podcast, originally shared this term with me and I loved it. It was VFM. And it was the difference between viral versus viral for me. So it makes me think, you know, oh, these days, if I don't get 100 million views like Mr. Beast, it doesn't even matter and I didn't go viral. Okay, I mean, maybe by Gundam style, definition of viral, a billion views, crazy, Charlie bit my finger for anybody who's, you know, aware of the old school. Yeah, that's maybe viral videos. But viral for me is if you're getting 30 views, 300 views, and you pop out a video that gets 3,000 or 13,000, that's a viral for me video. It's also a significant video because you need to celebrate. I wouldn't even call them small wins. The reason they're small is because you're number one comparing yourself. 13,000 views is freaking nuts, you know? Like you get a short that gets 27,000 views and yet you still go to bed sad. We got to reframe the whole game. We have to rewire our brains. I want to just encourage you, I hope after this podcast, that you just take a step away from negative self-talk 
and you step into a positive perspective of the growth you've been experiencing. Are you ready to start or grow your YouTube channel? Do you feel stuck and need help connecting the dots? Join this free web class where you'll learn the step-by-step -step playbook for YouTube success. We've helped thousands of purpose-driven entrepreneurs just like you grow their influence with video. Register today for this exclusive training at thinkmasterclass.com. And chances are, friend, there's a lot more bright spots and a lot more growth in your channel and in your history and in your knowledge and in your community that maybe you just kind of have forgotten about, haven't acknowledged. And when you start to acknowledge it, your motivation will increase. Number three, how do I stay motivated when I want to quit? How do I stay motivated on YouTube when growth is slow? You got to stop overthinking and start working. Sitting idle makes you prone to negative thoughts. And if you're like me, you are... One of your greatest skills is overthinking. Giving, giving some alone time. Does this person like me or not? Why did I get that negative comment? Why? I thought that video was going to do good. Why didn't the video do good? Is a meteorite going to hit the world and destroy it? Man, is our country about to be so divided that it's never, you know, you just start spiraling? Uh, like, what was that? That comment that that team member made or my spouse made, like, that was kind of mean. Do they really mean that? Is that person thinking about me right now? Why do I suck? Why is everything, just sitting idle can lead to a lot of overthinking and not a lot of progress. And because when you're sitting idle, your mind can just wander and go a lot of different ways. Well, what are some of the ways to just reverse that is literally to just start working. Now, I know this is hard because you're like, well, I don't have the motivation. Like just start, like start moving, start working, S you know, set some new goals. Set some small goals, set some realistic goals, and set some action goals, not some results goals. And this is a big key, I think, for motivation. If you're measuring just by results, then you might be criticizing yourself because you're like, I don't have a silver play button yet, which is insane, by the way. 100,000 subscribers, what are we even talking about? You can have a very profitable, successful channel you're proud of without ever getting a silver play button. We have so many success students that don't have silver play buttons, but that are full-time. That's a big opportunity. The big key is how do we define success? And if you only set goals that are like, my goal is 1,000 subscribers in the next 30 days, I think that's good, but that's not my favorite kind of goal. My favorite kind of goal is an action goal. My goal is two uploads a week for the next 30 days. And then when you do it, you celebrate. You're like, honey, get the kids. We're going to Chick-fil-A. I'm grabbing that Polynesian sauce. I need some of that buffalo sauce. Give me a little, uh, some ranch as well. I need some waffle fries. I just hit my goals. What was the goal? Eight uploads in a month. Did you grow? No, the channel shrunk. You know what I mean? Like maybe the results weren't what you thought, but you could be proud of the actions. I, I want to learn a particular skill set. So I've created a reading list. You have a PDP, a personal development plan, because you want to grow because part of this whole thing is learning new things. So you on your PDP is I want to read one book a month that will increase my education as it relates to how to be a successful content creator, a successful content creator um, as a career or somebody that uses video marketing to grow my business. So I'm studying online marketing, video marketing, communication, storytelling, whatever. So you pick out a list of books. You put 12 books on the list. You read one a month. And you, when you accomplish it, you celebrate the action. The truth is nothing really changed if you read a book. And maybe for you, that's audiobook. But it's something to celebrate. The actions of, man, my thumbnails are getting better. My goal this month is to simplify my thumbnails. So like action goals. Stop overthinking and start working. Like just get to work. Start taking action. Even getting out of planning a little bit. Planning is important, but like put planning aside, punch fear in the face, and press record. Take action. That's where, and motivation follows. It's kind of like, Floss one tooth. I think in the book, Tiny Habits, they talk about, well, I don't want to floss. I get my teeth cleaned and I'm always super terrified because the hygienist is going to be like, so have you been flossing? And you're like, well, I haven't, but you do like the night before. Why are your gums all swollen and like bleeding? You're like, well, I flossed last night because I thought it would make up for not flossing for like, and so in Tiny Habits, they say, instead of thinking, oh, I'm just going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to develop the habit of flossing every night. Make the commitment to floss one tooth every night. Well, that's ridiculous. Exactly. The thing is, though, if you get the floss out and you wrap around your fingers and you floss one tooth, why would you stop? You go, 
met my action goal, the momentum of like, well, if I'm this far, I might as well finish the rest. So it's the momentum of not overthinking and just getting to work and pressing record. Number four, create a routine for getting in the zone. This is a big one. So you're saying when your motivation's low, you're trying to think, man, how do I stay motivated? Growth feels slow. I'm just not in the mood. So how do I get into the zone? How do I get into the mood? I like to pursue flow state. And if you never studied flow state, perhaps we could talk about it in the future. It's a very, it's actually a pretty well-researched flow state. You've probably been in it before. Have you ever been creating content or planning videos or scripting your videos and time just flew by and you felt like you were at your best and it was the intersection of like distractions melted away. Your energy was right in that sweet spot. It felt like your brain was firing. The ideas were flowing and everything was just happening versus it's like fingernails on chalk. You're like, I'm filming. It's not smooth. The ideas are not flowing. The ideas are not connecting. Well, the question is, how do we get into flow state? How do we stay into flow state? How do we get in the zone? And I want to challenge you. What are three things you could stack together to spark your motivation when your motivation is low? Here's some things that I do. If my motivation is low, which let me encourage you, it may seem like, you know, Sean, the Think Media team, man, they, they just don't have bad days. I can assure you the opposite is true. <laughs> like the majority of days I wake up and I'm like, why I'm turning 40 this year. Like my, why does my back hurt? Like what, why am I exhausted? I've done everything right. Like I went to bed at a good time. What is growing on my back? You know, the other night my wife was like, Hey, oh, we we're actually, we were going to get massages. Very needed because I'm turning 40. Uh, and she's like, hey, do you want me to shave your back? My wife, Sonia. And I was like, "That's a, yeah, that'd be great. And she was like, I just thought that for the masseuse, like it'd be a lot better for their sake is what she told me after. And so she grabbed this little electric razor and I didn't realize how much back hair from so many different places this back hair was growing. What's the point? I have no idea. But the point is create a, a routine to get in the zone. So I like to stack these things. The point is motivation is hard to come by and it's hard for me. So I've developed a stack of things I can do to get me into the zone when I'm not in the zone. Can you go for a walk or a run? Can you cut unhealthy food? Meaning like I'm not in the zone, I'm just cutting it. I'm like, I'm going to know I'll be in the zone in the next 24 to 48 hours if I just start eating healthy right now. And that's not even like one meal. It's like, I'm gonna compound a couple days of eating healthy. Can you get hydrated? As you're literally listening to this, it's some time to drink some water. Keep drinking water. Drink some more water, you're probably dehydrated. It's something like 93% of all people are chronically dehydrated. You probably should drink some water. You will have better energy. That's None of this stuff is instant. It's a stack that as you compound it, though, by the afternoon, your whole outlook might change. But certainly in the next 48 hours, you could be a whole new person. Get some vitamin D. If the sun's not out, you could supplement vitamin D plus K. Get some great sleep. Read or listen to content that changes, charges you up. Turn on a YouTube video. Turn on an audio book. Read or listen to content that charges you up. Turn off empty calorie content. Turn off the shouting and turn out all. Turn off the arguing and turn off all the vitriol and all the politics and all the different stuff. If you're into that stuff, that's fine. But if your motivation is low, a lot of toxic energy and just charged, angry, divisive debates I get it. That stuff could be necessary. But is it necessary for you right now, especially when you're not in a good headspace, especially when you maybe are trying having trouble getting motivated? Turn it off. Turn off empty calorie content. Pray. And then imagine if you did all these things. Imagine if you stack them all. So what are three things you could stack together to spark your motivation? Here's one cool thing that uh, I came up with called a water walk. And especially when I'm in Vegas, I can walk out of our house and our neighborhood and I can go on a short loop around the block, and it's not a very long walk. It might take like eight minutes. There's a version of it. I could do it multiple times, or if I like carve the edges of the neighborhood, not just the one block, I could make it longer. But if I go on one water walk, it's about eight to 10 minutes, and it's three things. Go for a walk, bring water, sip on it as you're going, or electrolytes, uh, no sugar electrolytes, amazon.com, and bring some Bluetooth headphones and listen to some content that will reframe your thinking and stack those three things even for 10 minutes. Try it. Perhaps right now, that's what we're doing. Maybe I'm on your water walk right now and you're like, dang, I wish I would have brought water. And so I have found that I have forget to drink water all day. I've been sitting at a computer all day. I'm starting to get tired, fatigued. And I know that this is just kind of an energy charge and a mindset reset, but this is part of it that 
to, to start building momentum to tackle your YouTube. The challenge of getting motivated and coming up with ideas stacks some of these things up. Right now, I'm listening to The Wisdom of the Bullfrog, Leadership Made Simple But Not Easy by Admiral William H. McRaven, who served 37 years as a Navy SEAL. Leadership content, just challenging content, challenging me to be like, listen, success is sometimes simple, but it's not easy. It's like, what to do is kind of clear if I think about what my next step should be, but I just don't feel like doing it. Well, that's what leaders do. Leaders do it when they don't feel like it. So I'm listening to that the other day as I'm stacking up some of these things of my getting in the zone routine, and it's putting me into a whole different set headspace. Instead of just opening up Instagram and seeing what random reels come my way, I perfectly, I intentionally picked an audiobook, put on some Bluetooth headphones, and got back in the zone. And then number five, remember why you started. So if you want to stay motivated when growth is slow, number one, don't compare your growth to others. Number two, reframe your perspective. Number three, stop overthinking and start working. Number four, create a routine for getting in the zone. And number five, remember why you started. Long time listeners, of the Think Media podcast and our VRA fam know that we always say reasons come first, results come second. The root word of motivation is motive. So what is your motive for starting YouTube in the first place? Is it to help others? You know, if you're measuring growth and it is to help others, think about the subscribers and the views you've already gotten. Has anyone left a positive comment thanking you for your content? Maybe your goal is to reach millions of people or billions of people, but celebrate the one that you've encouraged or that you've helped. Celebrate the 10 that you've been a moment of inspiration or a moment of education for. Did you start to express your creativity? Are you creating content to capture history and legacy? Why do, why do you wanna do YouTube? What is your motive for doing YouTube? And remember your why when motivation is low to keep fighting for that goal, even if you're not experiencing growth. If you wanna rekindle your passion, ask, why are you excited about this? Why were you excited about this in the first place? How can you discover and rediscover your love for just content creation, period? Whatever happened to the days when we just made videos for the love of making videos? Whatever happened to the days when it wasn't all about just money or algorithms or views or trying to beat your prior best or be a one out of 10 on YouTube? And I'm obsessed with all those things, but I definitely think even a conversation like this could be so healthy to just kind of come back to the why. Can we just inject more fun into the process of creating content? Can we just create because we were created in the we were created by God in the image of our creator to create just like he did and just exp the act of creativity, just the art of it, just the process of it and how we're being changed and how we're being transformed. I found that thoughts like this they just help me get passionate again. So remember, reasons come first, results come second. And a few recommended resources for you, if you uh, that are my favorite resources for when my motivation is low, is uh, one, show your work by Austin Kleon, 10 ways to share your creativity and get discovered. Two, do the work by Stephen Pressfield, overcome resistance and get out of your own way. Those are two books. If they're on audiobook, I'd recommend it. Do the work for a lot of artists and creatives and entrepreneurs is a yearly read, if not a quarterly read. Do the work talks about the resistance that you're probably feeling. And it's a short book. It's great. And then if you want to check out The Wisdom of the Bullfrog as well, um, great for leaders. I think everybody would benefit from it. Again, written by a, a Navy SEAL of 37 years, Admiral McRaven. It's really good. Um, I think he wrote a book called make your bed or whatever. That's also very famous. We'll link these recommended resources in the show notes, in the YouTube description. And my name is Sean Cannell, rhymes with YouTube channel. I want to thank you for being a part of the Think Media podcast, and I can't wait to connect with you in a future episode.